Hey guys, Dennis from DC Supershine here. We are working on a Alcoa aluminum rim. Um, this rim is probably about, uh, I'd say, average quality when it comes to polishing. Um, it was last done last year. So the inside part, so the inner part, is from this lip onto the inside. So this part is what I refer to as the inner. And then the outer part is from here to the edge. So the inner part uh, is what we're going to start with. And uh, it's in average, average condition. So I'm going to do a little bit of sanding to it. I'm going to start with 320, 400, 600, and 800. We're going to do that to the whole rim, actually. Sometimes on the edge here, it gets a little bit more rough, which in this case it is. But 320 should be more than enough to take care of that. And, uh, and then we're going to get into the nitty gritty on uh, some people who have been asking me to get a little bit more into detail when it comes to sanding and what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna try and portray that for you guys today. Okay guys, so whenever you're looking for what to sand or what grit, my rule of thumb is if you think it only needs 400, go one grit lower. So start with 320. It's always better to sand a little bit more than not enough. So as you can see here on the inner part here and your outer part of the edge here, there's still some shine to it. So you could technically start with 600, 800 and then start polishing. But I always go an extra step. So I would go 400 here. Here there's no shine. So the edge here usually takes a little bit more of a beating. There's more pitting and stuff like that. So I'm gonna start this part with 320. I'm actually gonna do the whole thing with 320, but um, as a rule of thumb, that's what I try and go to, is I, I always choose one grit lower than what I think I should start with. So for the first segment of this video, we're gonna be doing sanding. So we're gonna work with 320, 400, 600, and 800 grit sandpaper. It's just normal aluminum oxide sandpaper that you would use to do, you know, uh, that uh, a body shop would use in their, in their shop to sand uh, whenever they're, uh, they're prepping paint. So it's the same type of sandpaper. DeWalt sander, it's a DA dual action. Or orbital sander. Mask is a must. Air protection for tunes. And when I'm sanding, I don't use gloves. So I'll, I'll be using gloves whenever I polish. So one thing I did forget to mention is your first grit is always the bulk of your work. So if you start with 320, your 320 grit is going to take you more time sometimes than all the other grits combined. Okay, so you want to make sure that you have the surface where you want it to be when you're done your first grit. If you move on to the next grit too quickly, you're not gonna get the results you want. So five inch sander, six inch paper. I do that for a reason. So the paper rolls over the edge. So whenever I get into the corners like this, I can just put a little bit of pressure and the sandpaper is gonna roll around the sander and still sand. And you're not gonna ruin your disc or at least not as quickly. Okay, so that's why I do that. So the edge here, that's what I do is I just put a little bit of pressure. You don't need a lot. You just move along and it'll sand perfectly. This is the look I'm looking for, okay? You can see that there's still a little bit of machine lines in this rim. It's most likely never been sanded. So you can still see the lines a little bit. So you wanna keep sanding until those lines are completely gone. Now these are, you know, there's rims that are way worse than this, that the, the machine lines are way more pronounced. These are very, very tiny, so they're coming out easy with the 320. So 
Um, if they'd be a little bit harder, I'd just skip the, uh, I'd uh, change to 180 to get the process done a little bit faster, but the 320's working well. So that's what you want to do. So I just sanded a little bit here just to show contrast to show you guys. But you want a nice silver look. Now these rims are trailer rims, so they're not, it's, this is not for a show truck. Um, even if there's a little bit of pitting left over, it's totally fine. Once they're all polished up, they're gonna look great. So you just wanna make sure that all of that stuff is completely gone before you move on to your next grit. Okay guys, so the 320 is now complete. Um, I have the surface pretty much where I want it. There's a couple more lines in here that are very, very minimal that uh, the 400 is gonna take out. But uh, so you can see that there, if you get a little bit closer, you'll be able to see some pits still. This is totally normal, okay? Now these pits, you can take them out. If you wanted to take these pits out to go a little bit faster, you'd start with 180 instead of 320 and uh, it'd take a lot more time. So. You know, if, if uh, it's your own truck and your own rims and you want to spend a, a bunch of time on sanding to get them perfect, um, it totally makes sense. This, these, these rims are for a customer. He wants them cleaned up and uh, they're going back on a trailer. So they don't have to be 100% pit free. So 320 is not complete. Now we're gonna go move on to the 400, the 600 and the 800. And what you want to do with those grits is basically you're just removing the sander marks from the prior grit. So you're making your room, your rim smoother. So the smoother the finish, the easier it is going to be to, to polish and, um, and you're going to get better results. Okay guys, so a couple things. First of all, pressure. Um, medium to light pressure. You don't need a ton of pressure whenever you're sanding. Um, on my first grit, so on the 320 grit for example, I'll apply a little bit more pressure and I'll put the sander on an angle to get scratches and pits and stuff like that. And then once that's smoothed out, then I'll use a, a flat surface. Again, with medium to light pressure. And then as I'm going through the grits, um, like right now I'm going to start the, the 800, uh, just light pressure is more than enough. Just let the sander do the work. Uh, there's no sense in, in, uh, in applying a bunch of pressure whenever it's not needed and then uh, you're just going to reduce the lifespan of your tool. So a little bit about sandpaper. I know a lot of guys uh, ask the question, when do you know when to change the, the sheet of sandpaper? Well, I'm a little bit uh, more impatient when it comes to sanding, so I might switch out a little bit sooner than I should. I just like to get the job done a little bit quicker. Um, but uh, just basically to keep using it until it's it's not really taking stuff out anymore and once you do this for a little bit you can see uh, a, redu a reduction in, in, uh, in dust as well so whenever you're not creating too much dust it's because it's not sanding too too much so just change your paper. Rule of thumb um, on a rim like this for example I'll use one or two papers on the bolt section one or two papers on the uh, the inner lip or the bigger outer in, uh, inner lip and then uh, same thing for the outer I'll use one or two on the main part of the outer and then one or two on the edge so you're probably looking at uh, let's say eight to ten sheets of uh, sandpaper for the first grit so my 320 I think that's what I use probably about eight or nine sheets yep exactly eight okay and then after that as you go through the other grits uh, you're going to lose uh, use less and less. So the 400, I probably used about four or five sheets. 600, same thing. And 800, I'm probably going to use two or three. Um, 
Now just remember that if you're gonna cheat and skip grits, so for example, if you start at 320 and go straight to 600, you can do that. If, you, you know, if you're short on 400 or you don't have any, you can skip a grit, but just remember that it's gonna take you more paper. Okay, so if your rule of thumb is four to five sheets of, of 400, well, you're probably gonna need eight or 10 of 600 to get the same job done, because it's a smoother paper. It'll take a little bit more to get those scratches out. Hope that makes sense. Another thing that's very, very important as well is the sander that you use. So quality means everything. Um, you know, I, I've, be, I've been the culprit of doing this as well. You know, you go to the store and you see a sander that's 30 bucks and you see another sander that's 130 bucks and say, oh, I'll buy three of the $30 ones and I'll have three. They don't do the same job. They just don't. Um, just recently, I, uh, I did that. That's all I could find. I went to the store. My uh, other Dewalt burnt out on me and um, I bought a cheaper one. It worked fine for the first day. And then after that, it started to lose RPM. And what happens whenever you lose RPM, it creates pigtails in your sanding. It is brutal to try and get that out when you're polishing. Like on a rim like this, it's not too, too bad. When you're doing tanks or something like that, pigtails are a huge problem so you want to make sure that you're 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 getting yourself a good quality sander I like DeWalt Bosch Bosch is 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 very good as well so the sandy is completed on this rim right up to 800 grit so again we went 320 400 600 and 800 and this is the look that you're looking for nice silver smooth it's super smooth to the touch this will be very very easy to polish and the quality of the shine that come out of this is going to be very, very good. Okay guys, we are at the polishing step. This is where the rim comes alive. This is the fun part. So, what we're going to be using is a rake to clean the pad. I don't use this too, too often, only whenever needed. If my uh, pad starts getting caked up, I'll use it. This is a new pad, so I'm going to use it just to start the pad. But aside from that, I just use it whenever, uh, whenever the compound starts caking up, which is not very often. I'm using my new DC Super Shine cutting bar. Whenever uh, these are going to go for sale, they're going to be green though, not brown. Mask, air protection for tunes, and 100% definitely gloves. So back in the day when I was a young buck, like the guy behind the camera, <laughs> I used to use a 6,000 RPM to do the inside of this rim. I don't do that anymore. I just use my 3,500. A lot easier on my hands, takes a little bit more time, might take me 5-10 minutes longer, but a uh, lot easier on the muscles, and uh, when it kicks on you, it doesn't hurt as much. And then the outer part, so the outside part, I'm definitely going to do with the 6000 though. Alright, so let's get started. Another important note, whenever you're sanding, so this is why I try and stay away from the air valve a little bit, because when the air valve is when the tire is still in, you can't get in there with the polisher, okay? So you want to stay away from there from sanding, and then I'm just going to grab an SOS and polish that and blend it in by hand after. Now, as you noticed, whenever I'm doing the inner part here with the machine, I work section per section. So. I don't move on to the next section until that section is done and the sander marks are gone. Okay, so again with, like, with the 3000 it takes a little bit more uh, time and, and, uh, and patience to get the sander marks out. 
So just make sure that you use the light as an angle because sometimes it'll look great like this and you just move over a couple inches and you see Santa marks. So just make sure you use the light to your advantage. This one looks really good. And then I just work section per section, do the center part. Um, and uh, yeah, that's how I do it. Now the outer part, I'm gonna do it to 6,000. When, they're, when they're, the, the rims are still on the chalk, I just do the whole rim there without moving. But because the rim is loose and, and moving, I'm gonna do my sweet spot. So my sweet spot, basically the, the part of the rim that's the easiest for me to polish is from here to here. So I'll do this section, roll the wheel, do this section again, roll the wheel until it's done. Okay, so we're on the outer part. I'm gonna use a 6,000 RPM. Um, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna do small sections and then move it as I go. If it's on the truck, you can always uh, jack up the truck and, and uh, make the wheel spin. That makes it a little bit easier for you. I normally don't take the time to do that. But uh, yeah, so let's get started. So 6,000 portion is completed. Now I just, I saw a little bit of sand marks in here, so I have to, I'm gonna fix that in there right now with the, with the 3,000. And then it's just basically uh, cleaning up the, the valve, cleaning up by hand with uh, some metal polish and we're done. So we're gonna do the finishing part of, uh, of the rim. And uh, there's two ways that you can do it. You can either do it by hand or by machine. So by machine, you would use a flannel pad with a blue bar or, you know, your finishing bar of choice. Uh, I prefer blue over over white, uh, just because it gives a little bit more of a blue tint to the to the aluminum. Now today we're going to just do it by hand. We're going to clean behind the valve here, and uh, I use cotton. So a terry cloth rough cotton. Whenever I'm I'm using my application rag, so I buy them in big pieces like this. They come in a roll. I cut them in four. I use that to apply, and I I always work with two rags so one rag to remove the biggest and then the other rag to buff the excess off you can use microfiber if you do use microfiber just remember that once it gets dirty it's pretty much done dirt gets in there and if you keep reusing and reusing it, you're just going to scratch your aluminum so i don't use um, microfiber too too often i stick with cotton and flannel so on rims and on uh, on diamond plate i'll use normal cotton and when I'm doing tanks and flat surfaces, I'll use flannel. It just reduces the amount of lines that it leaves behind whenever you're doing your finishing. So in all the years that I've been polishing, this is one of the best products, liquid metal polishes that I've, that I've used. It's a friend of mine, he's local. So I like to support local. And uh, Stefan Gauthier polishing, awesome, awesome stuff. So we're gonna work on the valve here right now. This is basically a, a, a one step. So it cuts very, very good and it leaves an amazing shine. Just a little bit of polish on your rag. If at first you don't succeed, try again. Sometimes it takes two or three passes before it gets to where you want it to be. My rule of thumb is after the third time, if it doesn't come out, it most likely won't. It's just because the tank or the surface is too rough. So just move on, don't spend, keep spending time whenever stuff's not gonna get any better. Now sometimes if there's a little bit of black, excess black, like I cleaned this rim up pretty good, but uh, some of you guys are not as experienced and you leave a little bit of black residue behind, you can mix a little bit of Arsol or mineral spirits. You put a little bit on your rag with your polish and it'll clean up that black really well. I'd say medium pressure whenever it comes to this. You want to apply a little bit of pressure to remove some of those buffing lines. On the inner part, it doesn't matter all that much because once the rim's on the truck, you can't really see that, but on the outer part, it's gonna matter. So you want to put a little bit of pressure to remove those buffing marks.
So this rag's brand new, so I'm probably just gonna need one rag, but normally I go over it quickly like this, remove the excess with my dirty rag, and I use my clean one and buff off the rest. I always like to go over it a little bit more than I should, just to make sure. Try not to sweat all over the rim. <laughs> That's it. That's a completed rim. So we're at Lambert Pumping here today, and uh, I wanted to thank them for letting us shoot this video here. Uh, thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate it. There's more of this content coming and uh, please comment below uh, Let me know what you think if you have any questions uh, If there's any concerns or anything like that, I'm uh, I'm gonna do my best to answer them for you guys